we're going to focus specifically on those connectors that you'll find primarily when you're moving video, when you're exporting, when you're uh, taking video from one device to another device. And here's the connectors we're going to cover in this particular lesson. We're going to start with the RCA Phono Connector. Yes, we did cover that in audio, but it's also available in video in two different flavors, if you will. We're going to talk about the seldom used nowadays BNC connector, just in case you come across that. We're going to talk about the recently popular S-Video connector that's starting to disappear. And then the IEEE 1394, known to most folks as Firewire. Lastly, the HDMI, which is used in some rare conditions for transfer of video, though it is more commonly found in a monitor configuration, which we'll get to in the next lesson, along with the other connectors like DVI, VGA, and SCART. As a video connector, you'll see the RCA Phono Connector, commonly with a yellow color, as you see in this uh, example on the left side. Again, that is something you'll see mm, going back some time to the 70s and 80s, even in the 90s, and, and maybe the turn of the century, that is the turn of the century 2000, when you're looking to move video and audio. Uh, most of the connectors we're covering in this lesson have video only, so the yellow connector would be commonly used for what we call composite video. It's not digital, it's called analog video. So it is um, one of the poorer quality levels for video. The other settings we're going to cover in this lesson allow transfer of better image quality, better signal quality, better color separation, better signal to noise ratio, less interference, etc. I'm showing this because I showed this in the last lesson as well. We would use the yellow typically for video, and the white and red would be left and right audio. You can see an example of a jack or a chassis connection on the right side that you might see on the back of a VCR or a home entertainment system or the output of a cable box, for example. And you could see there is a yellow connector there, and it is labeled video. Now, depending on uh, where this is on your connector, it could be video in or video out, depending on the device. And you see there is a red R and a white L. That's the right and left channel for audio. So those three connectors would go into that specific configuration. So that's how we can use the RCA Phono Connector, a single connector to transfer composite analog video. Now the RCA Phono Connector, in addition to being used as a single connector with analog composite video, where the entire signal is transferred on a single cable, can also be used in a much higher quality analog component signal. And here's an example of that. You see the three cables on the left side, green, blue, and red, and they would connect on the chassis on the device to a connector that looks like this, component video out. This is used in high-end home entertainment systems. It's used in some broadcast and high-quality video production facilities. And what it does is it takes the, uh, the signal itself, and the letter Y, by the way, in broadcast electronics, typically refers to the luminance, otherwise known as the brightness information in the signal. The C, the letter C, typically uh, deals with chrominance, or the color information in the signal. And it is component because it's split up into the separate components and transferred to provide a much better resolution, a much better image quality and color separation. So they actually take the signal and subtract blue, and then they take the signal again, and the system subtracts the red part of the signal, thereby defining the colors even more clearly. And that is a component connection. So it's the same exact kind of cables. A lot of times they're a better grade, a higher quality, but you could use this as well in the single configuration as long as you get your colors correctly. Again, that is the RCA Phono Connector used in a component analog video scenario. The next cable, most of us don't see this too often here. This is called the BNC, capital B, capital N, capital C connector, and it's called a bayonet connection. If you look into the plug on the left side of the screen, you might notice a very strong uh, silver pin, and then the outside is a locking configuration. Uh, this is used a lot uh, in, in days gone by, and to some degree still, uh, in military applications, in aerospace, 
in all kinds of configurations, space flight, NASA used these, um, and, and it's how they connected computers as well. So many of the data centers in days gone by would use this kind of configuration to connect coaxial cables between networks and that kind of a thing. It is still used on some high-end broadcast video production equipment um, because it does allow for the use and actually requires the use of a heavier grade cable that's very shielded where there might be a high degree of interference in a, in a television station for example. It also, unlike some of the other connectors, locks on. So you can see on the chassis mount on the right side it says video in and video out, all those BNC jacks that are there. You can see the center pin where the uh, the bayonet would, would slide in and lock, and it actually locks in so it can't accidentally be wiggled out or pulled out. I have seen them being ripped out, but, but it's, it's much easier to get a more secure connection and maintain that. You won't find this pretty much ever in uh, you know home entertainment systems, in most consumer, even prosumer video production equipment. It's largely in video production facilities, and if you, um, you know, are shopping at the local uh, discount store, and if you're in a broadcast museum, you will definitely see some BNC connectors. The next connector is S-Video. And uh, S-Video came into prominence in the 90s with the uh, home video technology known as S-Video, uh, Super VHS, that kind of stuff. Also used in um, Hi8 and some of the other configurations that were very popular. Uh, used as well in uh, a professional video production for quite some time. It is an analog video source, so it does not carry digital uh, video, and it is video only, so it does not carry audio. This will deliver better quality than the uh, single cable composite video that we showed earlier in terms of the, the yellow Phono RCA connector, much better quality because it does maintain some degree of separation between the Y and C channels. That would be the uh, luminance, the black and white information, and the chrominance, or the color information. So it separates them as it transfers it between devices, thereby maintaining better image quality. Now one concern about the S-Video connector, if you've used them at all, the interior four pins uh, most people find are very fragile. And when you connect, you can see it only will mate in one direction. There are those, uh, those four shiny pins. There's a little pin on the bottom on the left side you might see as well. And that mates or connects with the jack on the right side. There is that long plastic rectangular prong sticking out that is designed to ensure that the cable goes in one way and one way only. If you wiggle it side to side or if you accidentally, without really paying attention, attempt to insert it upside down and one of those pins gets bent or broken, um, worst case scenario is you have no signal that's transferred. Um, second worst case scenario, and I've seen this a lot, is that you will have black and white instead of a color signal. So if you think everything's fine, but you're getting a black and white signal instead of color, and you're using S-Video cables, pull out the cable and check to see if one of the pins are bent and not inserted correctly. It is a challenge. It can be done, but it is a very strong challenge to try to straighten those pins out. I've done it in a, in a pinch, but it is far better to throw that cable out and, and replace it with a new one because it's almost impossible to fix um, an S-Video connection that's been bent or broken. We're seeing this less and less in terms of professional video. There's fewer and fewer cameras that have this kind of connection as we move more and more towards digital and HD, high definition video. The next connector uh, is technically known as the IEEE 1394. A lot of folks know this as Firewire or DV. Um, that's kind of a mistaken nomenclature because it can carry both DV and HDV, digital video and high definition video. Now the IEEE 1394 was actually developed by the Apple Corporation and used first in Apple computer devices as a high speed transference. Apple's intention was that the uh, FireWire bus, the FireWire connections, would actually replace the SCSI, SCSI ports, which were very common at computers up until that time. It was, it continues to be used by uh, uh, computer companies, but also migrated and is heavily used by video companies. We're starting to see this transfer as we move from stream-based video over to file-based video. It does not transfer, uh, for the most part, doesn't transfer 
uh, file-based video, but primarily stream-based video. We're seeing fewer and fewer devices with FireWire connectors on them nowadays. I should point out that the icon or logo for FireWire you see at the bottom of the screen, that yellow um, kind of triangular looking piece, and that will identify or signify if you have a port on your computer or on your camera uh, that with that nomenclature it is a firewire port now if um, you may be newer to video or cables and connections and that's fine that's why you're in this class there are three different flavors or three different varieties of of the firewire connection from left to right we have four pin six pin and firewire 800 let me just take a moment and delineate between those two but before i do that let me also share that firewire does have a limited distance the longest you should run a firewire cable is about 14 feet a little bit longer i think it's 14 feet and eight inches uh, for it to maintain the uh, quality that it's designed to maintain beyond that you really should get what they call repeaters or amplifiers distribution amplifiers to run the signal so if you have to run it a longer distance than that know that you're probably sacrificing some of the quality it was intended first up is the four pin firewire connector and Apple actually invented the six pin firewire first because it has two additional pins thus pretty easy Chet four and six and the the two additional pins carried um, power from the computer from the main device out to a peripheral like an external hard drive um, four pin was modified by the Sony Corporation and it kind of got its own name called iLink letter I L I N K and the iLink was heavily used by DV cameras by digital video cameras with the mini DV format and you can see an example there is a little notch on the cable and it only goes in one way and you can see the arrow on the top typically will mate with the top part of the device as you can see on the right side is a four pin firewire port or jack and you can see a little indentation or notch that goes down into the cable that's where that little notch mates up it is very important you get it in the right way and by the way let me make this extremely clear in bold red letters never hot swap firewire cables never hot swap firewire cables meaning when you're connecting two or more devices a computer to a camera uh, a camera to a computer etc you must you should always turn one of the two devices off turn the power off on one of the two devices otherwise you run the risk of having power go down the wrong pin and actually damage your device I've had first-hand stories of video editors of video cameras of video boards inside computers getting fried or burned out because of that so never hot swap a firewire cable The next variety of uh, FireWire port is called the 6-pin, and you can see the plug on the left side. It looks mostly rectangular. It looks mostly rectangular, except you see on the right side, it's got kind of a, a triangular rounded edge. And that's more clear in the jacks on the right side of this image. You can see a dual pair of FireWire ports. This is, the, again, the six-pin variety. So this is the traditional one you'll see on the backs or sides of many different computers from the, the, you know, from the days gone by. There are still some, but there's fewer and fewer that have this six-pin variety. Now, you can easily match or mate a camera that has a four-pin FireWire port with a computer that has a six-pin FireWire port by just select, selecting the proper cable. It just has the same cable on, you know, four pin on one end and the six pin on the other. So there's different ways to adapt it. We'll talk a little more about that in the lesson when we get to adapters. The last flavor of the FireWire port is known as the FireWire 800, and this is more, uh, this is newer in recent years, uh, pioneered again by the Apple company and found on Apple computers. You can see on the left side is uh, the back of an Apple Macintosh computer, and you can see the FireWire port is here. There's one FireWire port. On the left, we have four USB ports. And on the right, we have two of the brand new what are called lightning ports. That's Apple's newest um, file transfer technology, um, something like more than two times the speed of FireWire. So extremely fast uh, file transfer. That's going to be kind of come the, the new 
that will probably become the new standard for file transfer, at least for some time to come. But again, you can see the FireWire 800 port is markedly different than the 406, uh, the four. You can see that the FireWire 800 port is markedly different from the four pin and six pin FireWire. In fact, let's go back to the previous slide here. And you can see the extreme difference between the FireWire 800 and the 6-pin and 4-pin. However, you can purchase a cable. It doesn't require electronics. It's just a cable that will allow you to connect and use a 4-pin camera, for example, a mini DV camcorder with a, a computer that has an FireWire 800 port on it. It's just important to understand you have the designation. It does not allow for the faster file transfer. In fact, the reason Apple kept inventing and kept working for it is data gets more and more intensive. FireWire 800 port allows for a data transfer more than two times faster than you'll see with a four pin or six pin FireWire connection. The next connector here, the HDMI, will more correctly fit into our conversation uh, around monitor connections, but I include it here for this reason. HDMI, which stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface, has become the new, you know, popular kit on the block for connecting between uh, home entertainment components and uh, flat panel TVs, big screen, high definition TVs. It allows the transfer of not only high quality, high definition digital video, but also audio. So it contains audio and video together. And you can see there are multiple pins in the connector. We have the plug on the left and the jack on the right. The reason why I'm including it here is there are some high-end video cameras that do have either the HDMI or a mini HDMI connector and allow you to transfer that usually just to play in your television set but there are high quality professional and broadcast mixers and editing devices that allow the importing of uh, a signal via an HDMI connector we didn't see too much of that when it first came out in the last decade primarily because the industry was very concerned about high quality uh, professional productions being copied through HDMI. And the digital rights management uh, arguments were going around and around. We're seeing some, again, some more expensive high-end production quality equipment that does have HDMI inputs, though again, primarily it's used for displaying on televisions. We could also talk a little bit about some of the other connections, but these are rarely, if ever, used for importing video, for putting video in somewhere, except on a monitor. That's why we're going to cover these, the VGA, the DVI, and the SCART connectors in the next.